Hello and welcome back. I'm Paul with TutorU and what we're going to be working on today is the science section for the GED. And I know that doesn't apply to everybody, but I hope to those that it does, that this is going to help you kind of get a little bit of an idea of what to study at first. Okay, And this is, this is like a quick start. So this is a rushed through thing. And I hope it's not going to be a death by PowerPoint. I'll try to make it a little bit more entertaining. Uh, but let's just kind of get through this, okay? And I, I hope it helps you out. If it does, make sure you comment, like, let me know, okay? Uh, if, it, if it just helps you understand some of these topics, okay? So, beginning with the, the GED science, one of the most important factors is understanding, like, parts of the scientific method, okay? Uh, one of those is developing a hypothesis, okay? an idea or explanation that you then test through study and experimentation. Okay? So when you hear an educated guess, that's what a hypothesis is. Okay? Uh, that's what the majority of people think of when you say an educated guess or like with science, okay? uh, hypotheses. So when usually in common conversation when people say i have a theory really they have a hypothesis okay so so if i do this then this will happen so if i do this then this will happen that's a very nice standard beginner form of a hypothesis okay uh if i never water my plant it will dry out and die you can test that maybe it won't die maybe you have a cactus right uh with that it you can go very long periods of time without watering your plant. So that's a hypothesis. If I turn down the temperature in the testing room, then the students will test better. Maybe during the summer, you know. Uh, it's something that you can try out. So if this, then that. Uh, like then in, something happens that you can test, okay? The very most important thing I would like, ask you guys to study is having the idea of the outline of the scientific method down, okay? So that is ask a question, do background research, construct a hypothesis, test your hypothesis, analyze your data, draw a conclusion. One of the most important things in science is to communicate your results, okay? Uh, when you have a good understanding of all of these steps to the scientific method, then you have a, like when you read an experiment, you'll be able to understand it a little bit better, why they're doing the certain things they're doing. And you can even understand if they don't do something they're supposed to, right? So like a really good hypothesis uh, that later maybe becomes a theory has went through this scientific method many, many, many times by multiple different scientists, okay? Uh, that communicate your results to me is probably one of the most important aspects to the scientific method and uh, to science in general, right? That's how we spread our knowledge. That's how we make sure everybody is doing the right thing, okay? On the GED, uh, on the GED test, you will be asked about the dependent variable and the independent variable. We'll get to that one in a little bit. Uh, but I want to go through, so these are dependent variables or independent variables of uh, a, a, an experiment, something that you might be reading when you're taking the test. Okay? So the variable being tested in the experiment, that's the dependent variable, the thing that is being tested. Okay? The independent variable is the variable that is changed or controlled in a scientific experiment. So earlier I mentioned uh, if I turn down the temperature in the testing room, then the students will score better, right? So the dependent variable is what I am testing, and that's the students will do better, okay? The independent variable is the temperature in the room. That's what I'm controlling, okay? The variable that is changed or controlled in a scientific experiment. So maybe I'll run the temperature in the room at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then again, for another batch of people testing at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I might want to keep them all the same people taking the same test to 
control the experiment, uh, but I can, I'm changing the temperature of the room, okay? So the temperature is the independent variable, their test scores are the dependent variable. Yeah, you change them and the result depend dependent variable changes, okay? So that's what you're hoping for, at least, right? When you change the independent variable, you're hoping for a change, something to happen in your deep variable. The control group, I'm, I briefly mentioned this too, like you want to keep things controlled in your experiment. So the variable or group that has no experimental conditions. So maybe if I'm running that, that experiment, my control group would be, since I'm, it's about testing people, my, my little idea there, maybe I'll have the same group of people, but the very first time they take the test, they, there's not going to be any change in the temperature in the room. It'll be what it normally is, okay? uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, so that would be my, that first part of that experiment would be my control group because there's no changes to the condition. So with the GED, I've, from my past experience with teaching it, uh, these Punnett squares show up all of the time. Almost a guaranteed you're going to get a Punnett square. So it's good to study them. Okay? So you have the capital letters, right? Oh, let me see. Uh, it's over there. Oh, dang it. Uh, but you have capital letters that represent your dominant traits. So let's see if I can, yeah, right here, this capital Y. And lowercase letters that represent recessive traits. And notice how the pair on the left side of the square gets transferred across. So when you're filling these out, right, so this Y moves from here over to here and here. So it went across. This Y went here and here. Okay? So they're going across, and then the ones on the top are going down. Okay. Two parents with, oh dang, I have a typo. That's okay. Uh, two parents with recessive traits should not produce something with a dominant trait. I will say that there are some anomalies in science where this does occur, some mutations where this occurs. Okay? So that's where things get very, very interesting when it comes to genetics and everything. These Punnett squares, the history of them is actually really fascinating. You have to have a lot of patience to, to do this type of experiment. Um, but take a look, study these. I have another slide coming up where you can pause it and kind of try to fill this one out yourself. Okay? And you can compare it to other ones. But you have your capital Y and your lowercase y. So this person here has one dominant trait. Has one dominant trait and one recessive trait. Then you have this parent over here with two recessive traits. So I have blue eyes, so this is a recessive trait. So that's maybe, I mean, this is the letter Y, but if it was the letter B, maybe that's what represents blue eyes, our Punnett square. Uh, genotype, okay, so the, they might ask you, or they will ask you, the genotype or genotypic ratio. So that's your ratio. Uh, that is the genetic makeup of the organism or thing. Okay, so that is uh, the the actual like letters, the ratios of them to other ones. So if you have two sets that have, or maybe you only have one out of these four squares that has two lowercase y's. Well, that's one to one to four, one out of four. Okay, your ratio. Uh, phenotype is what they look like, right? So that is, you might be a carrier for a recessive gene, okay? So if your parents have brown, or if one of your parents has brown eyes and the other parent has blue eyes, uh, you yourself might be a carrier for blue eyes. There is a chance. Uh, and if you end up having kids and one of them has blue eyes, there's a good chance that you were a carrier for the recessive trait for blue eyes, okay? Yeah, uh, it's a lot of definitions, but it's good to get comfortable with these words because on this GED science test, uh, there's going to be a lot of definition, or not definition, but a lot of reading, right? I don't want you to get confused when you read some of these words, being, like when you get worried, like, oh, I don't know what, okay? 
you will see if you see a pun in square you will see this word uh, homozygous okay, so homozygous both traits in the genotype are the same they are either they are either both dominant sorry about that they are both either dominant or recessive okay so if they are homozygous recessive then that means that that parent has uh, two lowercase letters they are homozygous dominant then that parent has two capital letters okay and then the alternative to homozygous where they're both the same is heterozygous the traits are different the person has the dominant trait but they carry the recessive trait so if you are a carrier for a recessive trait then you are your 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 genotype is heterozygous okay the traits are different the person has the dominant trait but they carry the recessive trait so for this first part of this video i'm going to end it here okay i want you to go back and rewatch this entire thing watch it twice if you need to three times if you need because i blasted through it okay so you want to you want to have a little bit of repetition and rigor even in what we just went over in the next part of the video uh i'm going to go through some chemical reactions and what to expect on the ged science test when it comes to like more of like the chemistry side of things okay well thank you for watching make sure you like subscribe and if i helped you out comment below